Hello, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Agile IT Town Hall Series. A little bit of background. The Town Hall Series will continue every month on the fourth Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. Pacific time. This is a service for Agile IT customers, and we will be recording these sessions and making them available on YouTube, as well as a little blog write-up in order that you can go back and share that with your team. The format will be a short presentation in order to be aware and conscious of your time. However, at the end, we will shut off the recording and you will be free to come off of mute and ask your questions in an open and safe environment. So for the inaugural episode, we've got a session on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, and this is being presented by Christy Guy, our resident licensing expert and head of our Agile Advisor program. How are you today, Christy? I'm doing well, thanks, Sean. I am super excited to see what you're coming to the table with today. But with no further ado, take it away. All right. So today we're going to talk about my, uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 and Plan 2. We're also going to touch on some of the other um, parts of Microsoft Defender. Before we get into that, we're just going to do a real quick little kind of recap on Endpoint Security. Um, why does Endpoint Security matter and why should you care about Defender for Endpoint? Uh, so first and foremost, users are the riskiest part of every environment and users use endpoints. So um, threat actors and bad actors are absolutely looking at endpoints as the place to get into your environment. Um, in the past, endpoint security was pretty synonymous with uh, antivirus, but we are in a malware and zero day and zero hour world now. And so when we're talking endpoint security, specifically within Microsoft, um, we're looking at something much bigger than just antivirus. We're looking at all of the ways that we can protect your endpoint, um, your endpoints and make sure that all of those are restricted and only allowing the right people to access your environment. Uh, because one of the things that happened during the pandemic was that many companies adopted cloud capabilities, but they didn't implement cloud security measures that matched those capabilities. Uh, and the cloud by design is supposed to be easily accessible. And so the cloud security measures are what you have in place to make sure that the only people who have that ease of access are the ones who are allowed to have it. Now, you might be an organization that doesn't have any remote workers, but that doesn't mean you're just good to go because remote workers and remote access aren't one and the same. Um, if you don't have policies in place protecting and preventing your users from accessing company data when they're off-site, um, as many don't, then you still have an issue even if all of your workers are coming on site every day. So if someone has Outlook on their phone or Teams on their phone, you're still in a place where endpoint security matters. So Defender for Endpoint, um, it's gone through a couple name changes. Microsoft loves their name changes. Uh, formerly Advanced Threat Protection or ATP, and then also Defender for Endpoint before the versions of Plan 1 and Plan 2 were rolled out. So now we have those two enterprise versions of Endpoint for Plan 1 and Plan 2, and then we also have Defender for Business. Um, Defender for Business is going to be the version that cannot be applied to enterprise licensing. It's only for your business licensing. So if you have the Microsoft 365 Business Basic, Standard, or Premium, that's going to be an option for you. Now, when we're talking about uh, Defender for Endpoint, we're really looking at these six capabilities. Uh, in the next slide, I'm going to show you which ones are specific to Plan 1. Um, and then we'll get into a little bit more detail about what each of these capabilities are and mean. Um, so we're looking at that core defender, vulnerability management, attack surface reduction, next generation protection, endpoint detection and response, automated investigation and remediation, and then the Microsoft threat experts. That last one there is um, not a capability so much as access to um, support that is security specific. And that one only comes with the plan two license. So of those capabilities, when we're looking at plan one, it's pretty slimmed down. We are only looking at attack surface reduction and then next generation protection. It does come with the ability to utilize APIs and integration, and it still has that centralized um, configuration through the Microsoft 365 Defender admin portal. Um, but really it's, it's much more limited than the plan two version. Um, and interestingly, Plan one is also limited compared to the Defender for 
uh, business version, which actually is a stronger license, but only limited to the business uh, suite. So if you look at the boxes here, each one of these is prefaced with a number. Um, what I did is I sorted these by Microsoft's recommended adoption rank, meaning that if you had the Defender for Endpoint Plan 2 license, their guide for what uh, to get configured first and have in place as quickly as possible for best practice matches this order. Um, and if you'll notice the green boxes, which are the two that are part of plan one, those ones aren't the first or the second. So if you go the plan one route, you are going with a, a diminished security approach where you're just not getting the most crucial and um, first ranked capabilities to get in place. So looking at this endpoint detection and response, um, the really key part here is the advanced hunting. That lets you do custom queries so that you can proactively look into your environment beyond what the um, Defender for Endpoint is already scanning for. Uh, that is built around custo query language, um, so KQL. If you're not familiar with that, that's totally fine. The guided mode would be for you. And then if you are, the advanced mode lets you get um, really granular with what you're looking to do. The second piece here is the threat and vulnerability management capability. Um, this one is where the risk-based approach gets utilized the most. If you're interested at all in the Defender for Vulnerability Management add-on, it builds off of this capability and you have to have the plan two license in place. So that's another reason to consider plan two. Then we have the next generation protection. That's gonna be the anti-virus and anti-malware, and then the uh, attack surface reduction. So that's really kind of the first line of defense. And it is nice to see that in um, the plan one capabilities, even if it isn't in the top three of ranked adoptions. Um, it's super great for getting the endpoint opportunities down um, and more limited. And so that's really where um, you want to limit the opportunities to get into your environment rather than just um, responding to threats as they're already happening. This next one here is the auto investigation and remediation. This one is I think the one I'm the most excited about, even though it's fifth on the adoption rank. Um, this one lets you, uh, you don't even have to do it. Basically, if a threat rises, um, it will auto investigate and remediate so that you don't have to lay eyes on it and that you don't need personnel responding to every single alert. Something that we've seen a lot with our customers is once they have something in place, uh, they're just blown up with notifications and it becomes its own full-time job to pay attention to that one thing. Uh, and if you don't have the IT bench to do that, or if you don't have someone on your team who is in a position to review and assess those threats, making sure that you're getting only the most relevant threats is pretty important. And so that's, that's a really neat feature here. And then this last one, um, it, again, it's not an adoption rank, but the Microsoft Threat Experts, that's Microsoft's basically managed uh, services for endpoint security. And so anytime you need to work with um, an expert on something specialized, that's gonna be available to you only through the Plan 2 license, not even through the Defender for Business. So touching on the Defender for Business real quick, again, this one is designed for small to medium-sized businesses. It's only applicable if you are in the Microsoft 365 business suite. Um, it is actually closer to plan two than plan one, which is really cool and exciting. Um, it has the endpoint detection and response, as well as the automated investigation and threat analytics that um, the plan one version lacks. It's included in Business Premium, so if you already have Business Premium, this is available to you. Um, and if not, you can add it on for your business basic and standard users. And just to touch on Defender for Vulnerability Management, Microsoft just rolled this out. This one really enhances the vulnerability management aspect of the Defender for Endpoint Plan 2 license. 
Um, if you have any risky, risky browser extensions or vulnerable applications that your users are utilizing, this is where you have an opportunity to do something about that. Um, browser extensions can always be very nerve-wracking. And so if that's an area of your business that you've talked about and worried about, this is going to be the add-on that helps you address it. All right. When you're choosing a plan, there's kind of really four key things to look at here. First and foremost, um, this entire product lives on top of uh, endpoint management through Intune. So if you aren't using Intune just yet or it's on the roadmap, then you might not be ready for Defender for Endpoint. But once you have that in place, this is going to be the piece that um, gives you security on top of just device management. The other important consideration is automation. Uh, like most of Microsoft's licenses, the difference between the top version of a license and a step-down version is going to be the automated capabilities within it. So really the question to ask here is, is your team or are you, do you feel like you have the capacity and the capability to handle all of those threats and alerts manually or would an automated response benefit you either just to reduce um, workload or also maybe it's just to get a higher level of um, response than you yourself might be capable of. Um, that next one here is going to be the Microsoft Threat Experts. Um, if you want access to that part of Microsoft's information and expertise, that's going to be through the Plan 2 license only. It's not included in Defender for Business. So that, um, if that's intriguing at all, that's going to be the pathway for you. And then that last piece here is if you're interested at all in Defender for Vulnerability Management, you're going to have to have the Endpoint Plan 2 license in place. So if there's any question, that's going to be the route to go as well. And then just to kind of review the licensing pathways for each of these, uh, the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Plan 1 license uh, is available as a standalone. It's also included in the E3 and then as such as part of the E5. Defender for Endpoint Plan 2, also available as a standalone. It rolls up into the Microsoft licensing through that Windows 10 or 11 E5 license. So it's also included in the Microsoft 365 E5 license, the E5 security license, and then the F5 security and compliance license. And then the Defender for Business license is available as a standalone for those business users or included in the business premium license. And lastly, if you've listened to all of this, you know you want and need Endpoint, but you just don't know where to get started. Agile IT is 100% unapologetically focused on Microsoft Cloud Services, and we are happy to help you not just utilize them, but figure out how to integrate them with each other to get the most out of all of them. All right. Great job, Christy, and perfectly concise. A lot of times I feel that online presentations, webinars go on and on and on. This is great for giving a lot of information in a short amount of time. I'm sure we have a lot of questions on the line. For those of you watching on YouTube, sorry, there's no way you can join unless you become an Agile IT customer. So that's the sales guy in me. But thank you very much for everyone who's joining and watching online. Give us a like and follow, and we'll be back next month with another session. And Christy, off the top of your head, do you recall what that session is gonna be? I think it's going to be Defender for Office 365. Great. So I think we've got a couple of Defenders coming up. And we do have a list of upcoming sessions that will be sent with updates, as well as a link to the video here in the next couple of days. Thanks a lot, Christy. And everybody have a great day. Mm -hmm.